Hey, what's up, everybody? Do you love Tweed Amps as much as I do? Do you own multiple? Do you have a different one for different sounds and, and different tones because it's from different years and it's made completely differently? Well, um, I'm one of you, and I love Fender. I love Fender Amps. I think the Tweed Amp is the uh, dawn of the modern guitar sound. And as soon as they slapped a spring reverb in there, it was over. That is it for me. It just sinks to my soul. Uh, however, I've watched this channel, Spectre Sound Studios, and apparently we are all idiots. And uh, I don't necessarily disagree with them. Now, I'm not saying that the guy over at Spectre Sound Studios uh, is calling everybody an idiot that owns a, a tweet amp. That's not what I mean. What I'm saying is that essentially, uh, he put out a video, and I'll put it in the description. You guys should check it out. And it, his, his conclusion is that all amps are essentially the same. And that the biggest difference in sound that you're going to get is going to be from the speakers uh, in the speaker cab and your mic placement. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me, you know. I'm a fellow audio engineer, and I, and I understand. I understand that amps are almost dead. I mean, I, most... Most of the sounds that I can get out of miking up an amp, I can get very, very close uh, with emulators. So it's, they're almost just there for, for people to feel them in a room when they're playing, uh, more so than have them in an isolated uh, space with mics and like tracking it all, you know, to get this raw sound. Uh, I'd rather be in a room with an amp and feel it. To me, that's what really hits home uh, when I'm playing through a, a good tweed amp. So I understand where he's coming from uh, when he says that all amps are essentially the same. But it really got me thinking. I was like, well, why do I own three of these things and think that they're all so very, very, very different? And... Um, well, that's when I started uh, checking out what kind of speakers I have in there and, and really digging into the amp models themselves to see, is there really a difference in a Tweed amp at all? Or are they essentially just all the same thing repackaged uh, with uh, a couple of different components, you know? So, yeah, let's, let's hear it. On top of that, I'm gonna show you how I can basically a, B a sound and make it match, sound match my amp with, uh, you know, some software and a little bit of EQing and stuff. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, you're going to have some, uh, you're going to have some bus compression. You're going to have some things at the end of something to make everything sound a little bit different than that raw, just straight mic'd up cab. Okay, you're going to throw a little reverb on the end of it. You're going to throw a little compression on the end of it. You're going to throw a little bit of EQ on the end of it just to clean it up, just to balance it out. And, you know, if to anybody who doesn't do that, you can tell their recordings sound raw. They sound, they sound, they don't sound balanced. They don't sound nice and, you know, um, cohesive. So let's check out the amps that I have and uh, dig in a little bit more and do a little bit of uh, sound comparison to see, uh, is there really any difference in any of these Tweed amps or are we all just idiots? So these are my Tweed amps. Um, I've acquired three of them over the years and I don't know which one's my favorite. They all sound very different to me. And they actually indeed do sound very different. But I think what makes them sound different is not so much what I once did. I don't, I don't think it is the model. I don't think a twin is much different than a deluxe or much different than a super reverb. Um, but they definitely all have different speakers, uh, different sizes, and... Um, you know, really, I EQ the shit out of my signal anyways. When I'm playing with these amps, like, depending on the room, I'm squashing the mids or I'm boosting them. And, um, you know, you want to just, you really just like the sound of these things because they cut through, they cut through a band, you know, they're loud. They were invented to be a PA of an amp. And you know, before the Fender Champion, 
there really wasn't anything that even could compare to what you know that amp could do as far as how loud it could get now most people didn't play it super loud because it would start to distort and a lot of people didn't like that sound but when you got a handle of that when you got a grip on that sound when you start to control how much drive you can you can put behind it. I mean, that was the birth of rock and roll, and uh, that is the start of what we know as good tone. Um, even though I think a lot of those early amps without the reverb sound dry and brittle, uh, not my favorite sounding amps. I like the ones that have reverb units. I have the 75 Twin. This is a vintage 75 Twin. Um, this is a vintage 69 Super Reverb, and this is a reissue. Um, uh, Blues Deluxe. So, you know, I think that the best thing to do at this point is just mic it up. Let's hear each one of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the condenser mic and uh, this Shure um, mic here on the cab. We're going to get a nice rich sound. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to it at all. You're just going to hear the raw sound. No EQ, no nothing. All right, and uh, hopefully my mic placement is, is going to capture the best parts of the tone. But we're gonna move the mic around a little bit too so you can just hear how like much warmer or brighter you can make it sound just by moving the mic. It's really like probably 90% of the tone is where you're gonna put the mics. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now look, I know that Fender has an enormous fan base and a fanatical one at that. I mean, I'm one of them. I've been using Fender equipment for a long time. Um, and to me, nothing sounds better than an American Fender guitar going through an American Fender amp. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a Strat or a Tele or a Mustang. Once you plug that guitar up into that amp and you crank it up just to a point where you're starting to overdrive those tubes and get a little bit of breakup in the signal, it just sounds it's just, there's nothing better, you know? So what I can remember is that in 1948, uh, Leo Fender built an amp, and it was like a four watt amp with an eight inch speaker in it, and he called it the Champion 800. Now I'm not even gonna pretend to say that I know all of the lineage of the amps throughout the years of Leo Fender's career, of him building instruments, amplifiers, guitars, just kind of like you know, pioneering the sound of what a tube amp will sound like and what it can do. And for me, a lot of these amp builders and just like, you know, the pioneers of the day were kind of working with artists at the time to tr really try to figure out what was gonna be the next best way of building uh, amplifiers and guitars to cater to, you know, new styles of music that were uh, being created. I know it's kind of crazy to uh, be buying like three different amps that basically are all the same thing uh, in theory. However, people will, you know, not be happy hearing that. They'll shout, you know, the blonde face is different than the brown face and the black face is different than the silver face and so on. But there's really more than one reason why I hold on to them. For me, like each one of them tells a story. You know, two of them are vintage, one of them's a reissue, and they all just, they all kind of have a piece of history in them for me, you know? And so in that way, they're not just amplifiers, uh, you know, that produce sound. They're like old cars, you know, there's something that, you know, they break down. Yeah, you have to give them a little bit of love. You gotta let them warm up. You know, it's, 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 to me, it's crazy that these things still even work, that they work at all. I mean, one of them is a 69 and one of them is a 75. I mean, these things are really old <laughs> and they work great. They sound awesome. So without further ado, here are the three amps. We're gonna start with the Blues Deluxe. So in the back of the Blues Deluxe reissue, we have a uh, brown and tan Fender Eminence speaker uh, made in Kentucky. So these things are going to have a particular sound. Uh, I've, I've seen them a lot online, um, you can get them between like 50 and 80 bucks. Uh, they, they have a very particular tone, so let's check this out.
All right, up next is the 1969 Super Reverb. Super Reverb, we have four tens, and all I know about these is there's a serial number, and it says 10 ALK, and I don't know what exactly these speakers are. I can find them. Um, I'm not sure what the brand is or anything like that. Uh, maybe you guys can help me in the comments. Finally, we have the 1975 Twin Reverb. So lastly, in the Twin Reverb, we have a vintage Blue Label Fender uh, musical instruments speaker. And these are very loud and very bright, so let's take a look. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to go back to back with short clips of each one of these amps so that you can really hear the difference in the sound between them. Now remember, this is all just straight up, no EQ, no compression. Now I can tell a significant difference in each one of these amps. Um, tonally, they are extremely similar, but the way that the EQ is captured, um, there are way more boosts in the lower uh, ranges and in the higher ranges. And I would say that the most balanced is the Blues Deluxe. The one that is the boomiest or the, has the heaviest low end with those settings um, is the Super Reverb. And the tinniest or the uh, sort of brightest one would be the 1975 uh, Twin Reverb. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I know I didn't A-B the performance exactly the same. That wasn't really the intention. I just wanted to kind of capture the sounds of them. You can tell, even though I'm not playing the same thing, it's a little boring just to hear the same clip over and over in a different amp. So real quick, I'm going to show you um, on the computer how I can get the almost exact same sound that I get out of these amps. Of course, you're going to tell a difference. At least I can tell a difference. Um, but I can get it really close with some modelers and today I'm going to be using um, Helix Native so if you want to see how I just like go about getting one of these presets to sound similar to my tube amps um, yeah stick around and watch this part uh, this is you know this is sort of interesting how you know we can kind of really sculpt sounds and really get kind of what you want uh, out of anything these days. Uh, does it sound the same? No, it won't sound the same, but it will sound super, super close. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll switch them back and forth so you can pick. Maybe you might like the digital one better, so who knows? Um, but you can do anything with these sounds, even with the sounds that are in here. This is pre-compression, pre-reverb. There's nothing on it. This is just the amp. You know, so I can beef it up. I can uh, make it more even. Uh, I can take out some of the peaks. I can bring up some of the softer sounds. Um, you know, when you're playing single notes, drops a lot in volume. Those thinner strings dropping a lot in volume. So nice compression can boost those and thicken them up a little bit. Um, that's why a lot of people use those treble boosts back in the day. So uh, and still do. So as you can see, when I come in here, that I just keep it pretty simple, okay? You know, uh, maybe this compressor cleaned it up, honestly, a little bit. But basically, let's look at the amp. Uh, I have the Litigator amp here. This is the Line 6 Litigator. 
Um, some people say it sounds like a Dumble. They do have Tweed amps. They do have the U.S. Blues Drive and all that stuff, you know. But honestly, this thing sounds the closest. And it's just the amp, a little bit of a spring reverb, and then the cab is just a 112, and I've got a ribbon mic on it. And this is the sound I'm getting, okay? Check out this sound. It's pretty crazy how close it sounds to a real amp. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. So just check it out. So could you tell a difference in some of the sound? Absolutely. But did it sound kind of like the same thing? Kind of like the only difference was maybe the EQ, kind of how the only difference between these amps was basically a general EQ. That's because they're all responding to the guitar signal the same way. They really are essentially the exact same amp, and they don't really sound any different. Just the speakers do. The speakers sound different. I could be wrong. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. But I genuinely think it's just the speakers. The way that they all they all respond to my guitar and picking sort of so close to the same thing, why don't you just mess around with an EQ if you want to get that kind of EQ out of it? I don't think they break up any differently. I don't think that they have anything special about them that's very different. So yeah, I think the guy over at Spectre Sound Studios is 100% correct. I think that these are all the same amp. and. I think the amp sims are so close that in a thick mix with a bunch of instruments, you can't even really tell the difference. So uh, I know I'll get a lot of flack for that probably, but it's whatever, you know. Uh, it's important to have the discussion. Do I think these things are gonna be worth any money in 10 or 15 years? No, maybe to like a couple of people, a handful of people who are really rich, you know, a rich dentist who plays blues, maybe a lawyer who plays blues, gonna buy up one of these amps. Um, you can put it on reverb if there isn't one available somebody might snag it up but there isn't going to be a huge demand for them outside of collectors and people who just like old things uh the one thing that is pretty unique is that it still works they work great they sound the same as they did 30 40 50 years ago i mean it's crazy to think that anything works this long uh nothing in my house nothing that i own nothing that i have ever had uh, is still working in good condition like these things from back then. There's nothing around, really. They just don't build stuff like that anymore. So I think that in its, in its own right means you should at least buy one, uh, you know, vintage Tweed amp. Uh, it'll make pops. It, it'll make cracks. It will break down on you like an old car. But they're fun. They're fun to have. It is that sound and it's authentic so do i regret having three of these things eh, not really you know i love each one of them very much uh and they all like i said tell a story and have their own history do i need all three of these absolutely not i could just have one and sell the other two at any time and i would still be able to get that sound that i need in the studio so um, let me know let me know what you guys think and uh, if you dug this hopefully I'll see you in the next video please hit the like and subscribe uh, because it helps the channel out peace